Here is another thing that those who teach a pre-tribulation rapture cite as evidence for the rapture occurring before the seven year tribulation period even begins. The church is not destined for wrath, but destined for salvation. Logically, it seems odd to think that Jesus would allow his bride to endure seven years of pure torture. The fact that the church is not destined for wrath gets absolutely no argument from me. That's a biblically sound principle. However, when you understand that God's wrath is not synonymous with persecution and tribulation, even at the hands of the Antichrist, depending on when God's wrath begins, it doesn't necessarily mean that the rapture of the church will take place before the tribulation period begins. All it means is that the rapture will occur before God pours out His wrath and judgment on the earth. When you consider all the scriptures that pertain to the end of the age, a clear picture emerges of the church suffering persecution at the hands of the Antichrist. This shouldn't be a surprise. The Apostle John was living under the oppressive rule of an earlier iteration of an Antichrist empire when he wrote the book of Revelation, that empire being Rome. John had been exiled to the Isle of Patmos on account of his beliefs by the Roman government. The Isle of Patmos is where John received the vision that he wrote down in the book of Revelation. This isn't a popular teaching, and you don't hear it much in today's churches, but throughout the New Testament, followers of Jesus are promised to be hated and persecuted because of the name of Jesus. His followers are to count it as joy when this happens. In the book of Revelation, we see Jesus promise his followers in the city of Smyrna that they will experience tribulation, some even being cast into prison. Despite that, he tells them to be faithful even to the point of death in order that he would give them the crown of life. Beyond scripture, history provides undeniable evidence that being persecuted for the name of Jesus has been a constant that has violently claimed the lives of thousands of his followers. What I have a problem with, in fact, it makes me cringe every time I hear it, it's when it's said that logically, Jesus would not allow his beloved bride to suffer. I think anyone who has ever said this owes everyone who God has allowed to be violently tortured and killed because of the name of His Son, an apology. When the dead in Christ arise at the rapture, they too will make up what we know as the Bride of Christ. Many of those that rise to meet the Lord in the air will have suffered martyrdom. Counted among them will be the first martyr Stephen, the Apostle Paul and Peter. The Christians that Emperor Nero had dipped in wax and lit on fire will be there, as will the 21 Christians beheaded on a Libyan beach by ISIS just a short time ago. Didn't Jesus love them as a part of His beloved bride? If Jesus were to return in our lifetime, how arrogant and self-absorbed are we to think that God would love us more today than all of those who have died in the past and will die in the future on account of His name. Yes, the church is promised to not have to endure fire burning a third of the trees, a flaming mountain destroying a third of the fish, an asteroid destroying a third of the rivers, demonic locusts stinging people for five months, grievous sores, the sea turning into blood, the sun scorching people, and perishing on the plains of Armageddon, among other things. But we are also promised trials, tribulation, and persecution because of the name of Jesus. There are specific promises of persecution taking place during the events that immediately precede the second coming of Jesus and the rapture of the church. God uses trials, tribulation, and persecution to sort out authentic followers of Jesus from the fakes. Every Christian should wrestle with the question of suffering and martyrdom as they work out their salvation with fear and trembling. To say that the Jesus that you know just wouldn't allow anything bad to happen to His beloved bride tells me that we may not be talking about the same Jesus. Jesus is not just the God of love. He's not a warm and fuzzy care bear. He is the God of everything, including justice and vengeance. He is a God that loves us so much to discipline us and teach us things. 
He is a God that refines us in a furnace like fine silver. You know, in addition to telling his followers one day, well done, good and faithful servants, he'll be telling others, I never knew you. Go to hell. Authentic children of God are called to take Jesus as he is, all of who he is, and not make up a God that's more acceptable to us. Although the church will not suffer God's wrath, there is overwhelming scriptural and historical evidence that God will, because He is loving and has the big God picture in mind, according to His divine purposes, allow His church to suffer persecution. This so-called proof of a pre-tribulational rapture is firmly debunked.